Right, let's start with the song. Thanks to our Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful. God is with us forever, forever, forever. God is faithful, forever. God is strong, forever. God is with us forever and ever. In the rising. To the setting sun, His love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. So God is with us forever. All right, we'll sing one more song. Kutiman and a famous part. This is his favorite song. Whenever I sing this song, you know, I remember him. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Long just to break. Something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to 
heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the things i've made it when it's all about you all about you jesus King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to heart of worship and it's all about you all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the things i made it when it's all about you all about you jesus you're looking into my heart into my heart You're looking into my heart Into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it When it's all about you All about you, Jesus All about you, Jesus All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving Father, Help us, O Lord, to remember that everything else is of least importance. But you alone are our priority, O Lord Father. You alone, O Jesus, is my priority. We don't have to fear man. You're not accountable to them. We don't have to think like them. We don't have to act like them. Because you have set us free. And if the Son has set us free, the scripture says we are free indeed. And help us, O Lord, to be free, to remain free as you have intended for us. In the glorious freedom that we have as Christians, help us to thrive. And help us to teach it with all boldness that Christ demands that his children be set free. We thank you and we glorify you. Pray that this evening as you speak to us, our hearts would be conformed to this reality, what the word of God is teaching us. That grace is a free gift and we have to just receive it free, freely, freely he has given it to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, can you see the screen? God's amazing grace. Hello. 
all right so let's start this evening okay we had i think uh, two classes with grace and today we are starting the third one and uh, i want to address this this thing that is disturbing about grace okay why does grace disturb christians you know so called christians Christians who have this risk element. Now today our our title is that God's grace is risky. Okay, God's grace is risky. So let's go into the first one. See, most people yearn to be free, right? There's a desire. There's a deep inside their heart. They have this desire to be free, and they hate living in bondage. people don't want to live in bondage they don't want to keep on living you know in 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 slavery anymore now the problem with most people is that they don't know where to find this freedom right? and they're searching for it and bible tells us that for a christian a proper understanding of god's grace is needed to enjoy real freedom okay so one of the joys of christian life one of the joys of following christ is that we enjoy his grace we enjoy his grace see if i did not enjoy my christian life i wouldn't be a christian today you know god has been teaching me over the period of time that this is grace and walk in it and when i walk in my grace i love my christian life i don't want to you know somebody asked me this question if i were to relive every choice that i did you know or made from the beginning of my christian journey till now would i do that i would say no why because i have enjoyed every stage of it you know the learning stage of it the running stage of it the equipping stage of it everything you know god has blessed me with i have enjoyed it and why is it that i was able to enjoy it is because of the freedom that christ has given to me now some would say there is risk involved yes there is risk involved and many many people if if they learn the, that i am teaching this you know they can misuse what i am teaching and some are misusing what i am teaching also some would abuse grace also you know they would misuse it so badly that you would think that this is abusing grace see that is like giving too much freedom to an immature child right so it's it's highly risky what we are teaching here is highly highly risky so i want to share with you a thought by dr martin lloyd jones okay dr martin lloyd jones was the uh, pastor of uh, westminster chapel for many many decades okay he was like uh, uh, he is a staunch calvinist uh, he believed in the puritan school of thought and uh, he his work on the book of romans is an extensive work okay it's a huge commentary that he's written on the book of romans and if you are studying romans and if you personally desire to study that please read that book you know romans of dr lloyd jones martin lloyd jones now he this man this martin dr martin lloyd jones you know he says in his book of romans uh an exposition okay of the book of romans he says that uh you know i i told you he is an expert in romans right he has been teaching romans for 12 years okay in his congregation day in and day out he was preaching on romans for 12 years and still not finished that book and he finished the book i think um one week before his retirement okay so for 12 years he preached it and when he was leaving the westminster chapel pulpit that is when he finished it finished the book of romans so it was like many many years many 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 sessions he was just preaching from this book only now what does martin lloyd jones say he says first of all let me make a comment to me a very important and vital comment what is that true preaching of the gospel of salvation by grace alone always leads to the possibility of this charge being brought against it there is no better test as to whether a man is really preaching the new testament gospel of salvation than this that some people might misunderstand it and misinterpret it to mean that it really amounts to this that because you are saved by grace alone it does not matter at all what you do you can go on sinning as much as you like because it will redound all the more to the glory of grace okay now what is he meaning here what is he meaning is that you know if you preach gospel of grace the risk is there people can misunderstand it people can misinterpret it people can even misrepresent it 
and once you do that that is actually a good check whether you are a good preacher or not see so that's what he says that's a very good test of gospel preaching if my preaching and presentation of the gospel of salvation does not expose it to that misunderstanding then it is not the gospel he says see i must be giving them an opportunity to understand grace properly and in that understanding of grace there is inherent in it the risk of misunderstanding it it is contained inside it see angane yana option kodukunnillengil then i am not preaching the right gospel that's what martin lloyd john says okay i'm not finished with it this is a long comment he says if a man preaches justification by works no one would ever raise this question okay ഒരു മനുഷ്യൻ പ്രവൃത്തിയാലാണ് രക്ഷ എന്ന് പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ അയാൾക്ക് ഈ പ്രശ്നം ഒരിക്കലും വരത്തില്ല ഓക്കെ സോ ഹിസ് പ്രീ ഇഫ് ഇഫ് ദറ്റ് മാൻ ഇസ് പ്രീച്ചിങ് ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് ടു ബി ക്രിസ്ത്യൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് ടു ഗോ ടു ഹെവൻ യു മസ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റോപ്പ് കമ്മിറ്റിംഗ് സിൻസ് യു മസ്റ്റ് ടേക്ക് അപ്പ് ഗുഡ് വർക്ക്സ് ഇഫ് യു ഡു സോ റെഗുലർലി ആൻഡ് കോൺസ്റ്റൻ്റ്ലി ആൻഡ് ഡു നോട്ട് ഫെയിൽ ടു കീപ്പ് ഓൺ അറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് യു വിൽ മേക്ക് യുവർ സെൽഫ് ക്രിസ്ത്യൻസ് യു വിൽ റിക്കൺസൈൽ യുവർ സെൽഫ് ടു ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് യു വിൽ ഗോ ടു ഹെവൻ സി ഇഫ് എ മാൻ ഇസ് പ്രീച്ചിങ് ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് ദെൻ ഹി വിൽ നോട്ട് ഫേസ് ഹി വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി മിസ്അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് why because he is preaching justification by works okay okay right so if a person is preaching justification by works nobody is going to misunderstand that he is preaching grace he is preaching license and no are misunderstand it illa okay now obviously he says a martin who preaches in that uh, sorry a man who preaches in that strain uh would never be liable to this mr nobody would say to such a man shall we continue in sin that grace may abound because the man's whole emphasis is what that if you go on sinning you are certain to be damned only if you stop sinning can you save yourself so that misunderstanding never arises see so he's not preaching grace at all here he's saying by works by works if you stop committing sin if you take up good works if you do this regularly and constantly and you don't fail in every any area of your life then what you will then become christians you will reconcile yourself to god and then you will go to heaven see so there is no element of grace here there is only doing works if a man is preaching like this he his preaching is wrong and nobody will actually misunderstand his preaching for grace okay so during the reformation nobody ever brought this charge against the church of rome why because the church of rome was telling this do it do it do it by your works you will gain it by your works you will gain it if you live properly you will get it you know that's how it was. if you live properly that is the proof that you are saved see that's what church of rome was teaching so nobody ever brought this charge against rome that you are preaching grace alone no there was no grace in what the church of rome was preaching but it was preached by whom martin luther was martin luther was preaching it day in and day out he was preaching it and because he was preaching grace this accusation was brought against martin luther what did the church of rome say martin luther is guilty okay because he is preaching free grace because he is preaching preaching grace alone he is guilty why is guilty because our man you know he wanted he got married to a lady after he left his priesthood he married a lady and he lived as they lived a husband and wife for a long years they had children also in that union so the the church in rome said this man who was a priest has changed the doctrine in order to justify his own marriage in order to justify his own lust see that's what the church said ayaka kalyanam kadikanam ayaka konjangala vanu adondu ayal alla doctrine maati grace alone adu kondu ana ayal preach cheyunna see by grace you won't be saved why that's what the church says but martin luther says justified by faith blessed by by grace only only so when martin luther taught it they opposed it they said because of his lust because he wants to marry this girl he has changed his doctrine he has stopped being a priest why because of this see so it is always the charge of formal dead christianity if there is such a thing okay dead christianity cannot be christianity okay? because christianity is always alive you see so martin lloyd jones says if there is such a thing has always brought against this startling staggering message that god justifies the ungodly അവർക്ക് അത് കേൾക്കുന്നത് സഹിക്കാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല ഡസ് ഗോഡ് ജസ്റ്റിഫൈ ദി അൺഗോഡ്ലി നോ ഗോഡ് കെൻ ഓൺലി ജസ്റ്റിഫൈ ദ ഗോഡ്ലി ഇസ് വാട്ട് ദ ചർച്ച് ഓഫ് റോം വുഡ് സേ സി ബട്ട് മാർട്ടൻ ലൂതർ കെപ്റ്റ് ഓൺ പ്രിച്ചിങ് നോ ഗോഡ് ജസ്റ്റിഫൈസ് ദി അൺഗോഡ്ലി സോ മാർട്ടൻ ലോയ് ജോൺസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ചാർജ് ദറ്റ് ഫോമൽ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ ഡെഡ് ക്രിസ്ത്യാനിറ്റി ബ്രിങ്
people who preach grace alone because they cannot stand this message that god justifies the ungodly so dr martin lloyd jones says this i would say to all preachers if your preaching of salvation has not been misunderstood in that way then you had better examine your sermons again yan ende prasangam prasangikkumbum idu yan clear aayittu grace padipichittilla engil yan ende prasangam onnode check cheyanu pulli parayunnu and you had better make sure that you really are preaching the salvation that is offered in the new testament to the ungodly to the sinner to those who are dead in trespass and sins to those who are enemies of god there is this kind of dangerous element about the true presentation of the doctrine of salvation see people can misunderstand it people will sometimes abuse it they will take your uh, you know uh, preaching as license to sin see but you better check if you are not preaching this grace that the bible preaches then you better check your sermon that's what martin lloyd jones is reminding us of now let's come to romans chapter 5 and verse 1 therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ right i'll check it i'll take that passage once more romans chapter 5 and verse 1 last week we checked on justification right therefore since we have been justified by faith we have been we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ now chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 says what shall we say then are we to continue in sin that grace may abound by no means how can we who died to sin still live in it see so when we preach grace alone people will ask this question shall we continue in sin so that grace will abound shall we continue to do on keep on sinning so that grace will increase see so that's the question that paul is asking to that let's go to 5 1 and start with justification again just to rekindle our memory okay chapter 5 verse 1 says therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ so what was our definition of justification our definition of justification is it is the sovereign act of god whereby he declares righteous the believing sinner while still in his sinning state it doesn't mean that the believer believing sinner stops sinning right it doesn't mean that the believing sinner has stopped sinning opposite is true actually no the sinner never stops sinning till the day he dies he keeps on sinning so when bible says he is justified what does it mean it means that he has not jo- yet joined the church he hasn't started paying his tithes the moment he is justified he has not joined the church he hasn't started paying tithes he hasn't believed uh, you know in christ Uh, enough to you know let go of all the things in his life like given up everything to follow christ no idea he hasn't been baptized yet he hasn't promised to live a sacrificial life he hasn't promised to live a spotlessly pure life you know no idea justified matra aitullo he has only taken the gift of eternal life simply that he has just accepted the eternal gift of life that jesus has given him at that moment he is justified he hasn't done any of these things but he is already justified so what has changed in his life he has changed his mind towards christ that's what we call repentance change of direction that's all that repentance means repentance does not means you have to live in acts of repentance no repentance means my my mind in my mind i was rebellious towards christ now i have aligned my thinking towards christ that is repentance a change of heart i stop thinking wrong about christ and i started thinking right about christ and i have accepted the free gift of god which is apart from works i don't believe in works gospel i believe in the free gift of god apart from works the moment my mind has changed towards christ moment i have repented and i have accepted the free gift of god apart from works transaction is completed deal is done god has saved you that's what happened so by grace through faith alone god declares the sinner righteous what does it what we call it justification and from that moment on what does the justified sinner do he begins a growth towards maturity day by day little by little he learns what it is to live a life that honors christ that growth towards maturity is what we call 
sanctification. So justification, a process that happened in the split of a second, when you changed your mind towards Christ and you accepted God's free gift of salvation apart from your works, the transaction was completed, you were justified. And from that moment, till the moment you are glorified when Christ comes again, you are in the process of sanctification, a process of growth towards Christian maturity. That's what we call sanctification. Day by day, this process is happening in every Christian. Now, let's look at an example. Right? Let's, let's imagine that you have a, a six-year-old son. Okay, A six-year-old son. You love this boy so dearly. Okay, And one day, you find, suddenly find out that to your shock, this boy has been killed, murdered. So, you give the you know, police a call and the police comes and investigates and they search and they search and they find the murderer. They arrest the killer and they bring him to the court. Now, as a father of the child, you have a choice. What is the choice? You can somehow kill the murderer you can plan and kill that man. Okay. That will be called vengeance, revenge. But you don't you don't do that. You'll say, okay, name And the court actually uh, you know ch checks all the evidence, finds him guilty, and the Lord takes course, and this man is sent to jail for a long period of time. This is called justice. Okay, So there is vengeance where you take revenge and there is justice where the law takes its course and punishes that man. Now, imagine in that scene when the court has done this, you go up to the judge and you say, I forgive this man. Okay, And you plead for, that, for the court to forgive this man. The court is surprised. And the court okay, says, okay, because you have no issue on that, we also have no issue, we leave him. And so, that man is now forgiven completely because you pleaded with the court, the court let him go also. And now, you do something even more stranger. You invite him to your own house. You adopt the murderer as your own son. Wow. That is grace. Okay. Your six-year-old son was killed. The murderer, you don't take vengeance on him. You don't allow justice to be done. Instead, what people will say, you're crazy. When you forgive that man, plead with the court that he should be let go. And once he is let go, you invite him to your house, adopt him as your son, and you live with him. This is grace. Now you understand why it is so hard for a person to understand what this grace is. You can't accept it. You can't, you can't tolerate this. You know? Not, we won't happily do this. <laughs> we won't readily do this also. You know? For us, it is, this is not the right way to do it. But God does it every day. He does it every day. He takes the guilty, the believing sinner, who says, I am lost, unworthy, guilty, as you have charged. I am undeserving of forgiveness. And what does God do? He extends the gift of eternal life. Why? Because Christ has died on the cross for this man. Christ has satisfied the demands against sin. What is the demands against sin? Death. Christ has satisfied the demand against sin by paying with his own death on the cross. And God looks at this guilty sinner who has come by faith alone, and God gives him the righteousness of Jesus Christ, his own son. And then he adopts him as his own son. And then he invites him into his house. And then he starts making this person a part of his own family. He is doing it every day with you and me. Okay? Instead of treating us with vengeance, instead of executing justice in our life, God extends grace. Otherwise, none of us would be saved. None of us would be saved. Romans 5, 1 again. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God 
with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so won't people take advantage of it? Yes, people will definitely take. Some people will definitely take advantage of it. You know? And some people will actually accuse the preacher also. Oh, you're preaching cheap grace. You know? You're preaching cheap grace. People will take it for granted. No, no. This word cheap grace is actually made uh, coined by this man called uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German. You know? He said about cheap grace. But it's good that this man introduced this word cheap grace. Why? Because... When you look at cheap grace, cheap grace justifies the sin. Any kind of pardon, see, our pardon, see, I mean, the young grace license had to be given. I mean, cheap grace no are there. But pardon, see, don't they? I mean, I mean, wind wind, but I mean, young grace, Krabya, all along, I mean, expect to be done. I mean, wind wind, but I mean, don't they? See, so cheap grace justifies the sin. But we are not preaching cheap grace. We are saying true grace, which God gives. it does not justify your sin it justifies the sinner see true grace justifies the sinner cheap grace justifies the sin see the difference so your sin is sin god will deal with sin also but the sinner has been saved by grace he has been justified so you you and i don't have to be afraid of true gra- true grace why because people are misunderstanding what cheap grace when a man uses grace to do li- as a license to sin he is actually justifying his sin with that grace that is cheap grace but when we live our christian life we have to believe in true grace which the bible teaches see in spite of all the risk grace is worth everything so if not for grace what are my options what are the alternatives okay first of all i can go the safe route as a preacher no i can go the safe route i can say uh, you know i will not preach salvation by grace itreyam aalkarane tetti therikkuvengil itreyam aalkarane misunderstand cheyengil yan a grace yo license aayittu yan preach cheyan paadilla i cannot preach because i am not preaching license you see and i am scared that people will misunderstand that grace so i will stop preaching on grace i will say the holy god will judge you adu parayam alkarakku pediyam he will send fire and brimstone just like how sodom gomorrah remember sodom gomorrah il thee aichathu pole so that extreme i'll go to the extreme and i will say all kinds of scary things so that people will be afraid be very very afraid paapam cheyam pedichittu avaru cheyathilla see that's my that's that can be a safe thing re angane prasangikana korchu safe karana da grace prasangicha aalkar misunderstand i miss you same so yan ende jeevathilum kripa practice cheyathilla karana da cheyidu kaniyal aalkar enne kutram parayum oh ningal endu kripayana ullu jeevikunnu ennu paranjal ende preaching ne adu baadhikkum you see adu kondu i have four alternatives naal options undu enikku what are the four options first i can emphasize works over grace pravartiyil njan kooda stress cheyan povanu okay i tell you as a sinner you need to have a stronger commitment you have to uh, demonstrate you know works on his behalf idu cheyidale ningal rakshikapettu ennalladhu telivavathullu see so i'm emphasizing works over grace appadi anallo കുറച്ചും കൂടെ സ്ട്രോങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കമ്മിറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് വേണം കർത്താവിന് ദൈവത്തിനോട് ഓക്കെ എന്നിട്ട് കുറച്ച് പ്രവൃത്തിയൊക്കെ വേണം ദൈവത്തിലേക്ക് വന്നു എന്ന് കാണിക്കുന്ന കുറച്ച് പ്രവൃത്തിയൊക്കെ വേണം ദെൻ അത് ഇത് രണ്ടും ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ മാത്രമേ നമുക്ക് പൂർണ്ണമായിട്ടും വിശ്വസിക്കാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ യു ആർ എ ബിലീവർ യു ട്രൂലി ബിലീവ് എന്ന് ഇപ്പോഴേ നമുക്ക് പറയാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ സി ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് പീപ്പിൾ നൗ കോൾ ലോഡ്ഷിപ്പ് സാൽവേഷൻ സി പ്രൂവ് യുവർ വർക്ക്സ് prove your commitment to god then only we know that you are really believing then only you are saved you see but there is a problem with this teaching what is that a sinner who is lost cannot commit to anything why because he is dead in his trespass, trespasses he is dead in his sin see he or she is spiritually dead so that person cannot commit to anything there is no capacity in a sinner for commitment he has an unregenerated heart 
See? So, becoming a committed, obedient, submissive disciple is only after you, you have become a believer. You see? Only after you start believing in Christ, only after you have been justified, can you become a committed, obedient, submissive disciple. What does it mean? It means that works follow faith. Works follow faith. Behavior follows belief. I'll say it again. Works follow faith. Behavior follows belief. Adhyam belief vanam. Adhyam faith vanam. Ennitte pinna namakku works ullu. Adhyam belief vanam. Ennitte pinna behavior maarath ullu. You see. Nobody is going to look for fruit before the tree is planted or the tree starts taking root. The fruit is checked only when the tree has grown up and then it bears fruit, you see. So, fruit comes after the tree is well rooted, not before that. So, if you emphasize works over grace, then you are, in, then you are on dangerous ground. You know what Martin Luther says about that? Let me say that. No one can be good and do good unless God's grace first makes him good. See? See? And no one becomes good by works. But good works are done only by him who is good. Just so the fruits do not make the tree, but the tree bears fruit. Therefore, all works, no matter how good they are and how pretty they look, are in vain if they don't flow from grace. This is Martin Luther saying. Okay. So, unless God's grace first makes him good, no one can do good. By works, by good works are done only by those people who become good. When God has made them good, then only they can do good works. I know commitment on them, but why? Because that man is dead in his trespasses. You see. So the problem with this preaching works over grace is that can't, a sinner can't possibly do that. See. Second thing as a preacher I can do is I can opt for a list of do's and don'ts. Okay? What list I can do? What do you 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 do? You use this list. Okay? Now, it becomes my responsibility to tell you what to do and what not to do based on my list. Okay? If you want God's acceptance, what should you do? You should live according to my list. God will accept you then. You, see? you do what I tell you to do. Okay? And when I tell you no, don't do something, you don't do that. You are in. If you disobey me, if you disobey this list and you do whatever you please, then what happens? You are out. See? So either you are in or out based on whether you are doing my list or you are not doing my list. You see? But you are not doing list. This is the legalistic style of teaching that is surrounding us now. Okay? Now, grace is being strangled to death. Okay? So, th these kind of people, you know, they, they exercise so much of authority on the person who breaks the list. See? Authority and Amkar can Jodi Yamada. Authority above questioning. See, you cannot question that because that person made the list, you see. So you can't question that person. Avenor Chodin Jena, leader of Chodin Jena Mingil, you have to have rare guts. Hey, Athrang confidence on them, list to follow at the Markilla. See, so we'll, we'll talk about it in detail in another class, okay? But I'm just saying this is one of the alternatives. I can opt for a list of do's and don't do's and stuff it down your throat. And when you don't keep to that list, I can exercise my authority on you. Thirdly, there is no room in my life for gray areas. See, everything I want is black or white. 
ഓക്കെ എവറിങ് ഐ വോണ്ട് കാറ്റഗറൈസ് അണ്ടർ റൈറ്റ് ഓർ റോങ് ഇതല്ലാതെ നടുക്കൊരു ഏരിയ ഉണ്ടെന്ന് ഞാൻ വിശ്വസിക്കത്തേ ഇല്ല അതായത് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദി ഓൺലി വേ ഈ ബ്ലാക്കും വൈറ്റും പറയുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് മാത്രമാണ് ഈ ലീഡറിന് അനുയായികളുടെ മുകളിൽ ഒരു ഭയങ്കര കൺട്രോൾ ആയിരിക്കും ഓക്കെ ബ്ലാക്കും വൈറ്റും ചെയ്യാതെ ഗ്രേ ചെയ്യുന്നവനെ ഇവർ കൂട്ടത്തില്ല ബിക്കോസ് ഈ ഒന്ന് ഒന്ന് ഞാൻ വൈറ്റ് ആയിരിക്കണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നീ അപ്പുറത്താണ് ബ്ലാക്ക് ആണ് സി നടുക്കൊന്നുമില്ല സോ ദ പ്രോബ്ലം ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ വാട്ട് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പെർസെൻറ്റ് അഗ്രിമെൻറ്റ് ഈ വൈറ്റ് ഞാൻ പറയുന്ന വൈറ്റ് എല്ലാവരും വൈറ്റ് ആണെന്ന് സംഭവിച്ചാൽ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പെർസെൻറ്റ് അഗ്രിമെൻറ്റ് നീ ബ്ലാക്കിലോട്ട് പോയാൽ അപ്പം നീ ഔട്ടാണ് സി ഇവിടെയാണ് പ്രശ്നം വരുന്നത് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദ പ്രോബ്ലം ദിസ് എ വെരി ബിഗ് ട്രാജഡി യു നോ വൈ ബിക്കോസ് വി കൺസിഡർ ദിസ് rigid standard as something more important than relationship we consider the standard as more important than the individual see a vyakti ki or sthanam illa paksha standard nu bhayangara importance aanu okay appo nammal chalapa nammal chala issues undu aa issues la aa vyaktide kaalchapad endha nammal nokkum okay oru udaharanam parayam there is a teaching that you know a christian should not watch movies okay appo njan ad firm aayittu vishwasikkana njan ende aniyayigalude mullakke adi cheyipichikkam cinema edu cinema christian cinema polum kaanan paadilla allenge christian cinema kando pesha allada cinema ennu kaanan paadilla mohanlal mammutti ka out aanu okay you can't watch any movies ennu parayna aa doctor njan vishwasikkana ad ende ende idile cinema kaanunnathu black aanu cinema kaanadirikkunnathu white aanu ennu njan parayanu ende aniyayigalude mullalla njan adu force cheyidondirikkana aa samayathu if one of my followers go and watch a movie immediately he is black okay i'll break all relationship with him i don't want to spend any more time with him he is out okay so according to my standard he is not right and i want to be right at all times i have to be right nya right avanengil avan wrong aaye pattu so because of that no more relationship with god i will not choose to love my neighbor that is not important but i have to keep my standard you see ആ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡിൽ കോംപ്രമൈസ് ചെയ്യുന്നവനെ വെച്ചേക്കത്തില്ല സോ കട്ട് ഓഫ് ഓൾ റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് ഐ ഹാവ് ടു ബി റൈറ്റ് ബട്ട് ഐ ഡോൺ ഹാവ് ടു ലവ് മൈ നെയ്ബർ ആസ് ഐ ലവ് മൈ സെൽഫ് യു സീ ദ ഡിഫറൻസ് സോ ഐ ബിലീവ് ബിക്കോസ് ഗ്രേസ് എക്സസ് ദെർ ആർ ഗ്രേ ഏരിയാസ് ഐ എം നോട്ട് ദ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ഓഫ് എനിത്തിങ് ഐ ഡോ നോ ഓൾ നോളജ് അബൌട്ട് ഓൾ തിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് ഗ്രേസ് ഹാസ് ബീൻ ഗിവൺ ടു സംബഡി ഹു ആർ മൈ ടു സേ ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് യു കെൻ ഡു ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് യു കെനോട്ട് ഡു i am not the authority on that finally the fourth alternative is this i cultivate a judgmental attitude towards those who may not agree or cooperate with my plan see ende plan vere nee vannilla engil ninne kurichu njan aadhyame judge cheyidha ngalk ennu ellarum parna nadakku endo nee seriyalla ennulladhu njan nadakku okay now this is one of the most unchrist like characteristics that can come inside a christian i'll say it again this is one of the most unchrist like character that can come inside the heart of a judgmental attitude towards others who had this the enemies of christ had it the pharisees had this you see it was dangerous right john chapter 8 was 30 to 32 he says this as he spoke these things many came to believe in him jesus therefore was saying to those jews who had believed in him if you abide in my word then you are truly disciples of mine and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free the truth shall make you free see so when i preach grace two kinds of people are disturbed he kalle nammal eduthu pokkumbo undallo adinte adi nu pala puluvum paludare ekka porthottu varum angane ulla rendu paludaragal aanu porthu varunathu when you preach grace one is the grace killer the pharisee comes out pharisee says no 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 you preach grace that means you are wrong you are giving them license to sin wrong and the other paludara that comes out is the grace abusers oh manchetan enik license vannu endum cheyam poi kallu odikkam koothaadam endum cheyam see because manchetan yana yan follow endu manchetan parana endha free grace both paludara will come out of the hiding see grace killers and grace abusers but that's the risk that we have to take why because the bible teaches it i am not the authority to keep them from abusing grace 
I am not the authority to keep them from killing grace also. Who is the authority? Jesus is. Jesus is. And his grace is true grace. That's what the Bible teaches. And I have to preach that, you see. So, when Jesus spoke of the liberating power of the truth, the Pharisees objected. See, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, we'll stop with this, okay? If you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Free from what? Free from yourself. എൻ്റെ സെൽഫ് ഞാൻ ഇത്രയും കാലം ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ സെൽഫിന് കീഴ്പ്പെട്ട് നിൽക്കുകയായിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ സെൽഫിന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് ഞാൻ എല്ലാം കാര്യവും ചെയ്തത് അതിൽ നിന്ന് നിനക്കൊരു ഫ്രീഡം കിട്ടും സെക്കൻഡ്ലി യു വിൽ ബി ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം ഗിൽറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഷെയിം ഇത്രയും കാലം ചെയ്ത പാപങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാം കുറ്റബോധം കൊണ്ട് എനിക്ക് തലവൊക്കെ നടക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ല ബൈബിൾ വായിക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ലായിരുന്നു പക്ഷേ ഇപ്പോൾ മൈ ഗിൽറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഷെയിം ഹാസ് ബിൻ ഫോർ ഗിവൺ സെറ്റ് ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം ദാറ്റ് ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം ദ ഇംപൾസസ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ കുഡ് നോട്ട് സ്റ്റോപ്പ് വൻ ഐ വാസ് ഇൻ ബോണ്ടേജ് ടു all those sins and the lastum and the anger and the short temper temper all i had was that i didn't have any power to fight that i had no impulse to fight now i have been set free you see i have been set free from that then i have been set free from the others opinions mattullorude enne kurichulla abhiprayam endu parayo avan angane even ingane aare endile parayade what what's that doesn't matter to me anymore why because i am free he because he says that if i am concerned about that then i will not be free you see if he says it is pull for me you know why because i don't care his opinion about me doesn't matter why because i care only about the opinion of christ that he has for me see reputation is something which people think of you but the reputation should actually be what christ thinks of you you see so i'm free from others opinions i am free from others expectations of me or christian i to christian leader i manu ingane kana cheynadu see hey that is your opinion about me that is your expectation of me what does christ expect adu yan cheyala see i don't want to do what you expect of me i can do whatever the word of god expects me i am free from others demands you know what others demands of me adonu enike avanda avashyamilla yan angane onnu aayi theranda avashyamilla kartha venne kodunna avashyam adu mathram yan aayam adu see and free to what in the anola sawandrayan i am free to obey god's word i am free to love people who are sinners i am free to forgive others who have done wrong towards me i am free to allow others to be who they are different from me ellu enne pole aipinde endo ullu so i can have a person who is a who is a crazy fellow who loves football still be a you know christian and i would still love him you see i have no issues with that a person who who goes uh, adventuring trekking you know up on the himalayas and comes down i have no issues with him a person who writes books and novels i have no issues with him i am giving him freedom to be himself and I, i i am taking the freedom to be myself you see so free to allow others to be who they are and who are they they are different from me see so human effort in the apart jeevikkanulla swandram kodukkan edukkanum namukku sadikana so jesus is assuring us the truth of the gospel will liberate you from unwanted restrictions okay if the sun sets you free john 8 36 underline in the bible if the sun sets you free you are free indeed okay the possibilities are limitless okay so we'll stop here we'll continue with next time I want to emphasize the second part of the risk in the next class. But today, so far, we saw that it is risky. If you preach grace, you are in total risk. Okay? If you preach grace, that there will be two kinds of people. One is grace killers. They will come hard against you. They will say, you are not preaching the gospel. And the other is the great, uh, grace abusers who will say that, oh, I am giving them license to do whatever sin they have been entertaining in their mind. Okay? That is why we have a chance to give them a license. But if I don't preach grace, there are four alternatives. these four alternatives are not at all christian first of all i can emphasize works over grace that's not biblical secondly i can opt for giving you a list of my do's do's and don'ts i'll shove it down your throat thirdly i leave no room for gray areas 
ഐദർ ബ്ലാക്ക് ഓർ വൈറ്റ് ഇതിൽ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് നല്ലെങ്കിൽ നീ ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് തന്നെ പുറത്ത് പോകും ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഫോർത്ത്ലി ഐ കൾട്ടിവേറ്റ് എ ജഡ്ജ്മെൻറ്റൽ ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ടുവേഡ്സ് ദോസ് ഹു മേ നോട്ട് എഗ്രി ഓർ കോപ്പറേറ്റ് വിത്ത് മൈ പ്ലാൻ എൻ്റെ പ്ലാനുമായിട്ട് സഹകരിക്കുന്നില്ല എങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഞാനുമായിട്ട് യാതൊരു സഹകരണവും ഉണ്ടാകത്തില്ല എൻ്റെ റൈറ്റും റോങ്ങും നിങ്ങൾ അക്സെപ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല എങ്കിൽ യു ആർ ഓൾറെഡി കണ്ടംഡ് ഹു കണ്ടംസ് യു നോട്ട് മീ ഐ എം സെയിങ് ഐ എം ക്ലെയിമിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഗോഡ് ഹസ് കണ്ടംഡ് യു സി ബട്ട് ഇഫ് ദ സൺ ഹാസ് സെറ്റ് യു ഫ്രീ യു ആർ കോൾ ടു ബി ഫ്രീ ഇൻ ഡീഡ് ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം യുവർ സെൽഫ് ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം ഗിൽറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഷെയിം ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം ഓൾ ദി ഇംപൾസസ് യു നോ ദാറ്റ് ഐ കുഡൻ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് അറ്റ് വൺ ടൈം വൻ ഐ വാസ് ലിവിങ് ഇൻ സിൻ ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം ഓൾ ഓഫ് അതേഴ്സ് ഒപ്പീനിയൻസ് എക്സ്പെക്റ്റേഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഡിമാൻഡ്സ് ഐ എം ഫ്രീ ടു ഒബേ ഐ എം ഫ്രീ ടു ലവ് ഐ എം ഫ്രീ ടു ഫോർ ഗിവ് അതേഴ്സ് ഐ എം ഫ്രീ ടു അക്സെപ്റ്റ് അതേഴ്സ് ആസ് ദേ ആർ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഫ്രം മീ so let us live a life of freedom and not of bondage let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you this evening for the grace that you have abounded into our lives you abounded it because sin was so abundant in our lives sin had taken complete control over our lives we were dead in our trespasses and at that time grace came grace abounded even more and it has set us free and once we are free help us to enjoy and live this christian life as free indeed not as slaves again to bondage we thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen